You know how to drive. You have your driver's license, your commercial driver's license, your school bus endorsement. So, what can we tell you about driving techniques that you haven't already been told? Nothing. This is a reminder, and an important one. As a professional driver, you use the safe driving techniques you've learned no matter what kind of vehicle you're driving. A vehicle the size of a school bus, however, can create some of its own issues. And when you're behind the wheel of a school bus, you've got a lot more to be safety conscious about. So before you go out on your route, we ask that you join us on this one, The Route to Safer Driving, a video guide to driving techniques you should use in order to drive your school bus more safely. Along the way, we'll stop and pick up tips on defensive driving, grade and railroad crossing, turning, merging and backing, and negotiating intersections. Defensive driving. Do you complain a lot about other people's driving? Everybody does. But you're a professional driver. You can make up for some of the shortcomings of others by being a better driver yourself. It's called defensive driving. Three things need to be in proper working condition in order for you to be an effective defensive driver. Your vehicle, your eyes, and your good judgment. Right now, let's talk about your eyes and your good judgment. Use them. Five common sense techniques that can help you to do this are as follows. Keep scanning. Manage your speed. Manage your space. Leave yourself an out and make sure they see you. Keep scanning. All around you, traffic is constantly changing and moving. Make sure your eyes are moving along with it so you're aware of the total traffic situation. By constantly scanning ahead to the sides and behind your bus, you'll be aware of all the different traffic elements around you. And you'll be better able to anticipate traffic problems before they become hazards. Manage your speed. Of course, if you spot a hazard while you're scanning, you'll want to avoid it. This is a lot easier to do while driving at a reasonable speed. What makes a speed reasonable depends on several things. The posted speed limit is a good place to start, but also consider the volume and speed of traffic around you, your visibility, the terrain you're driving through, and the condition of the pavement you're driving on. Manage your space. Try to maintain a cushion of space between you and the other vehicles on the road that will allow you room to move should you have to suddenly change your path. To create a space cushion, slow down in dense traffic. Keep a safe following distance in traffic. For example, when driving at less than 40 miles per hour, this is about four seconds of space between you and the vehicle in front of you. Five seconds of space is recommended for speeds over 40 miles per hour. And avoid driving directly alongside other vehicles. Leave yourself an out. The follow-through to scanning, the big picture, and managing your speed and space is anticipating what you'll do in the event of a traffic conflict. Try to be aware. If I stopped right now, what would happen? If I slowed down right now, what would happen? Can I turn suddenly if necessary? Which direction? Of course, no one can predict what other drivers will do, but by giving yourself a sufficient space cushion and keeping aware of your position in traffic, you'll be better able to pick a predetermined way out of potential or actual traffic hazards. Make sure they see you. You'd think a bright yellow 40-foot bus making its way down the road would draw plenty of attention to itself, huh? But never assume other drivers and pedestrians know you're there. When changing lanes, approaching an intersection, or coming to a stop, make your presence known. Tap your horn. Use your turn signals, flash your lights, whatever it takes to alert others of your presence and your intentions. Grade and railroad crossing. If you have a railroad crossing on your route, don't take chances. Assume there is a train coming every time. As you approach the crossing, turn on your yellow school bus hazard warning lamps and tap your brakes to warn other drivers that you are about to stop. Whether or not you are carrying any passengers at the time, bring the bus to a complete stop between 15 to 50 feet from the rails nearest the front of the bus. 
on multiple lane roads, stop in the right lane unless you have to make a left turn immediately after crossing the tracks. Open the service door so you're better able to see and hear. Turn off any noisy equipment such as radios and fans and instruct your students to be quiet. If your view of the tracks isn't adequate, don't try to cross them until you can clearly see that no train is approaching. If a train does pass, make sure that another train isn't coming from the other direction before you proceed. Remember to look to see if there is enough room for your entire bus on the other side of the tracks should you have to stop immediately after crossing. When you're certain the tracks are clear, you can move across. If you have manual transmission, be sure you're in a gear that won't require you to shift as you cross. After safely crossing the tracks, remember to close your service door and turn off your yellow hazard warning lights. Turning, merging, and backing. Turning, merging, and backing aren't all that easy to do when you're driving your car. In a 40-foot school bus, they can be especially challenging. Off-tracking is a phenomenon that occurs every time a vehicle makes a turn. It means that the rear wheels of the vehicle track inside the front wheels. The longer the vehicle, the greater the off-tracking. The danger is that in making a turn, your rear tire could ride up on the curb and hit something, including a pedestrian. To compensate for off-tracking, you need to use your pivot point in making a turn. Your pivot point is a conceptual point at the center of your rear axle, which moves the least while your bus turns. When making a right turn, you should pull straight out into the intersection until the curb of the street you're turning onto is even with your pivot point. Then, turn your wheel hard to the right. Now your right rear tire will easily clear the curb. It's recommended that you swing slightly to the left before making a right turn to give yourself more room to turn. But be careful here. Don't allow more than four feet between your bus and the curb on your right. Vehicles behind you may think you're going straight or taking a left turn and try to squeeze in along your right side. Depending how close they are to your bus, you may not be able to see them there. When your bus makes its right turn, the vehicle to your right can get pinned by the off-tracking rear wheel. This is a very common cause of bus accidents. Left turns are usually easier than right turns. There's a seven-step procedure for making safe left turns that applies to right turns, too. Check your mirrors frequently before and during your turn. Move into the proper lane and signal your turn well in advance of making it. Know the position of the other vehicles and any pedestrians around you. Check for fixed objects or obstacles. Reduce your speed as you approach your turn and cover your brake. Merging onto a highway can be another tricky maneuver when driving a school bus. Here's a few techniques that might make it easier for you. Start looking for a sufficient gap in the lane you want to enter as soon as you can see the highway. Activate your turn signal. Never assume, however, that other drivers will let you in. They may not be able to change lanes to give you room or they may not notice you approaching. If you see a sufficient gap, accelerate on the ramp and in the acceleration lane to match the speed of the highway traffic. Use your flat mirror to watch the lane as you enter it. Convex mirrors are bad for judging distance. Don't forget to keep watching the traffic in front of you as well. The vehicle ahead may have stopped. This is a major cause of accidents. When it comes to backing your school bus, there's just one rule to remember. Try to avoid backing whenever you can. Backing is, by far, the most frequent kind of bus accident. These can involve fixed objects or pedestrians in the blind spot behind your vehicle. If you're in a situation where you must back up, follow these guidelines. Back into, not out of. Always back into the area with a lower risk of hitting something. For example, back into a parking area so you can pull forward into a street rather than pulling into a parking area and backing out into a traffic-filled street. Get out and look over the area before backing. Look for obstacles low, high, and to the sides of your vehicle. If you have students on your bus at the time, turn your bus off before getting out. 
Get help with backing whenever you can. Especially in a school zone, if you are forced to back, make sure you have an adult to help you from the outside of your bus. Ask the students on your bus to be quiet as you back and open your driver's side window so you can listen for any outside warnings such as another vehicle's horn. Tap your horn as you back. If your bus is not equipped with a backup alarm, use your horn to warn other vehicles and pedestrians you are backing. And use your four-way hazard flashers. This will serve as another warning to other vehicles and pedestrians to keep away from your bus. If there's a point on your route where backing is unavoidable, ask your supervisor to tell the parents in that area that a bus will be backing up regularly on their street. Again, however, try to avoid backing whenever possible. Go around the block or use a different route instead. It might take a little longer, but it's probably a lot safer than backing up your bus. Intersections. Intersections are, by definition, hazardous. Approach them with caution, always. As you come upon an intersection, reduce your speed. This will buy you space and time to avoid any traffic problems that might suddenly come up. Other drivers, buildings, parked cars, mailboxes, light poles, large trucks and pedestrians, all these elements can present hazards and all are commonly found at intersections. When approaching intersections with traffic signals, always be prepared to stop. If the light is green, don't assume you can uncover your brake and coast on through. Consider how long it has been green. Look for tip-offs telling you that green light might change soon, like a flashing walk-don't-walk walk sign. Avoid entering an intersection when the light is yellow. If you are too close to stop safely and smoothly, however, continue through the intersection and alert other drivers and pedestrians by using your horn and making eye contact when possible. When you're stopped at an intersection, take the time to scan and be aware of the situation around you. Keep track of pedestrians and other vehicles around your bus. Will they be in your path when the light turns green? That's why it's always a good idea to avoid quick starts when the light turns green. You may not be able to see that bicyclist to your right or that driver crossing in front of you running the red light. Let the other traffic go first and don't expect the right of way. Before you move on, make sure your path is clear. Look left, right, and left again. And once you're in the intersection, never try to change lanes or pass. This is another common cause of accidents. If you realize you're in the wrong lane or want to pass the vehicle in front of you, stay in your lane and wait until you're out of the intersection to alter your course. Remember, any point where two roadways cross is an intersection and can present serious hazards. Road crossings without traffic lights or stop signs, alleys, and even driveways should be approached with the same amount of caution as controlled intersections. You have enough to think about as you drive your route without trying to remember all the safe driving techniques we've just shown you. We don't want you to think about them. We want you to make them habits. Practice defensive driving, proper railroad crossing procedures, proper turning, merging and backing techniques, and negotiating intersections with caution. When these techniques are a part of your everyday driving habits, you are well along the way on the route to safer driving.